I just briefly went through this post of our friend's journey on abstinence and um, there was some interesting continuity here that I wanted to perhaps color, highlight, add a little bit more. And uh, equally, I was hoping that those of you that have gone to this kind of extent or beyond in this journey could also leave some comments in the uh, in the comment section below, because I think it's you know, very motivating and certainly adds to more conviction. And you know, the more brothers we pull out of this particular de degenerate cycle, I believe, you know, more light, more goals, more outcomes that we desire come more serendipitously to us. But I waste no time. Here are 21 personal insights this individual had discovered while being on this bout of celibacy. So um, we've done the introduction. Read this if you're just starting and want to get some idea what may happen to you. So buckle in, chaps, maybe pour yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, save it for later. I don't know. I'd like to maybe have a, a meal while uh, watching some of these informative and educational uh, stories. So everybody's lives are different, but I think this will also apply to most since we have this one thing in common. And it also doubles up as a kind of guide for those uh, who may be falling at some of the earlier hurdles. So I'd start off by saying that I don't necessarily know why or how this stuff happens. This is why I'm here to perhaps add a little bit more esoteric and scientific color in that regard. I don't really understand how or the correlation between retention and changing people's lives and how it affects others around you. I don't know the science behind it, if any. Anyway, here's the list of things that I've personally observed in my journey of uh, abstinence. First and foremost, there's a, um, there's a real change in energy levels. And this was the first thing I noticed. I want to know, what, what was the first thing that you noticed when you began to refrain from uh, the self-pleasuring cycle? For me... I instantly recognized that there was a less, I, I needed less sleep. That's the easiest way to describe it. I remember distinctly waking up an hour before my alarm would go off and it was none of that grogginess. You know, if you ever wake up in the middle of a REM cycle because of your alarm and you, you hit the snooze button because you need an extra half hour, an extra hour, but you get none of that grogginess. It's, that, it, it, it's all, it's as if you get this kind of full satiating uh, recovery and I believe the science behind it is because you're not taxing the body in the same way. It takes a lot of nervous energy for you to uh, sexually release and then sexually replenish yourself. So when you're not doing that compulsively several times a day, you don't need as much recovery and you, you don't need as much sleep. Uh, for better or worse, if your life is negative, for example, it will be very uh, volatile more than if you weren't on retention. So things that angered you before will really piss you off now almost at a visceral gut level. Now, I believe this is a relation also to your testosterone levels getting higher. And I would, I mean, anger maybe is a word that you could use interchangeably, perhaps competitive behavior, perhaps assertiveness, perhaps conviction might be something that you feel a, again, a visceral gut level towards. But I, I, I really, an interesting way is maybe the comparison with steroids is that it makes you more of what you already are. So if you're already an angry person, you're taking steroids, then you become angrier. But I didn't really feel this very palpably to me. If anything, it just made me want to convict more on the things that I was doing on a base level every single day. Hit the gym harder, work on my business harder, things like that. I'm wondering again, leave your personal insights below when it comes, uh, when it comes to this. Uh, to expand on the first point, you will also attract things into your life based on your energy. To give a personal example, I both attracted criminals to me like shady bad people do to their own energy, like they thought I was a kindred spirit. And I've also attracted a beautiful, pure-hearted woman who was looking for marriage, children, etc. when I was a good, in a good and positive, healthy place as far as my energy was concerned. I did repel her if my energy went bad, but I attracted the negative people a lot. Your energy is strong on this. Be aware of this and fix your life so you get the good people coming to you people will come to you regardless. Yeah, it goes back to the previous point of what I'm saying is what you already are, you kind of amplify that. If you're holding yourself in this very kind of lower apathetic energy, then similarly you attract that kind of likeness. But I really believe that the tangible effects abstinence has on your, what would you say, the mitigation of shame in your life bumps you up north of uh, pride in Dawkins's uh, Hawkinson's. I always say Dawkins because of David Hawkins, D. Hawkinson's uh, consciousness scale, which you should all be familiar with, by the way. That is an essential language. It's not, 
It's like not speaking the language of your body if you don't know David Hawkinson's uh, consciousness scale. Read Power Versus Force, read Letting Go. Essential reads for every single human being. And uh, that's all I'll say on that. Number three, again, expanding a little bit more on the third point, people will come to you no matter what. All kinds of people. I had a homeless man talk to me, never happened before. I had a woman pay for my items at checkout when my card got declined and didn't work. She smiled and winked at me after definitely hitting on me. Another woman asked me to help her pump gas. The Americans. What do you call gas a liquid? Or a liquid of gas? Yeah, never got it which never happened to me before. I suspect she didn't need help, but who knows? There were a lot of people around uh, me, but she asked me to help her. I had a police attention before, uh, more than before. They come up to me, started talking to me like, who is this? So you get attention, be wary of your own energy. So you attract the good. Your Taurus feel expands. The human body is a magnet. You have a positive pole and you have a negative pole. So the positive pole is at the top of your spinal cord and the negative pole is by your sexual organs. Now, you can imagine if you've got a very diminished negative pole, meaning your sexual organs are devoid of energy, then there's no polarity. There's no polarity from the positive to oscillate between the negative and thus expand your Taurus field. That's gonna happen when you start to go on this bout of celibacy is you're repairing your root chakra, you're expanding your Taurus field as a consequence of replenishing sexual energy, which is actually more feminine in nature and therefore more chaotic. And maybe an inference you can draw between that is why you might spontaneously get attraction, be it positive or negative. But I believe the way you can manipulate that is with the positive, right? You become that which you think about the most. So if you're holding positive thoughts and you're magnifying that with your feminine aura, um, your feminine energy is a better way to describe it, which is a sexual energy, which is a Shakti energy, then the Taurus field expands. It's like a magnet, any magnet. If you've got the poles need to match each other and uh, you're always going to follow what's in your in your head, which with what you're drawing with intention. The, uh, the uh, intention is so important when you're going on longer bouts of abstinence because you can unknowingly cause your own pain and um, your own suffering by constantly holding onto these negative thoughts, like flat lines, for example. They're just an idea. And I've talked extensively in my Patreon, uh, long lectures and breathwork lectures about how you can... Um, flat lines don't exist. Flat lines don't exist because they're trapped nervous energy in the places uh, where you're not transmuting that energy. And uh, you do that by utilizing prana, which is breath. Breath moves shakti energy, which is sexual energy, and you'll never get flat lines ever again. It's simply a consequence of stored biological, uh, electrobiological energy or uh, bioelectrical energy in the places where it gets stagnant and stuck. You have to move it. You have to move it, right? Uh, maybe I'll expand on that in just a moment, but I think I did a very good uh, explanation there. Uh, depression and anxiety and stress ruins this good energy that retention gives you. It fights with it, and if you don't get it under control, it will ultimately win. Yeah, this is the thoughts that they're holding in the positive part of your pole. Make sure that you are you are holding good intentions, and um, a good a good uh, exercise with this is visualizations. Uh, another really excellent one is memory anchoring, which is whereby you're going back into your memories to positive memories, which give you those positive emotions because the nervous system can't distinguish between a, uh, a memory and uh, what's happening to you in real time. Meaning, if you think back to the first kiss you ever had or when you had a girlfriend, your body believes that's happening in real time, oxytocin uptakes, and uh, you're, you're easier able to hold on to positive thoughts for longer periods of time. And therefore, it oscillates with the sexual energy, with Shakti energy and you're better able to bring more of these things into fruition. When you understand how this works, uh, it becomes a lot more simple. It's like being given the guidebook in many ways. But the good news is retention gives you some clarity and some insight into your life and problems. You will see things clearly, even if it's ugly. You will see ugliness in yourself and others. Very aware of the downsides of life and people. Their bad energy, intentions, and corruption, especially the corruption or loss of purity in all ways, since you are coming from a pure-hearted intent. You will be aware of these things on a visceral gut instinct level. Life can seem messed up and sad in general, like society as a whole around the world. You will see things clearly. 
This is one of the aspects of retention that have somewhat uh, that some have commented on, but not a lot. We live in a perverted world. Don't need to tell me twice. Uh, that's the truth. You may get lonely, so make sure you have good energy and attract other good-hearted people uh, with pure intent. I think you did a good job uh, explaining that. I suppose the easiest way to say is that when you can discipline your animalistic impulse, the limbic system, the carnality, the impulsivity, the reactivity, you're using, it's interesting you're referencing the gut there because that's where a lot of your intuition comes from. It comes at a primal level. And once you have better jurisdiction of your primal level, then you can see it, it's almost scary sometimes how you can instantly kind of become receptive to individuals that you want to spend and invest your time in and those that you would prefer not to because your intuition is now working for you because you've disciplined that aspect of it. You're transmuting that energy from the pelvic floor up into the second brain, which is your which is your gut plexus. Uh, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, lower Dantian, I believe they call it in Taoist culture. But this is the second brain. It holds the largest amount of nerve, nerve connections, I think, second only to your cerebral cortex. So it's it's like a brain here. And that intuition is not a esoteric, airy, fairy, nebulous, intangible thing. It is it is your gut biome. It is your it is this plexus here. And you can move that nervous energy from your pelvic floor, from your genitals, through breath work, up from the root chakra into the um, into the gut plexus. And that's how you can start to actually utilize this with a better intention. Adult material will gross you out. The idea of adult material seems sick to you. It also seems pathetic because you will understand that it's giving up uh, in life in some sense. Guys who self-pleasure themselves either can't or aren't trying to get laid in real life. They're just lazy and you will understand this clearly. Yeah, it's um, the analogy I give with this is looking at a painting when you're very, very close up. You need to take five, six, seven, eight or ten steps backwards to see the, the picture of what you've been doing. You've been trapped in the cycle and only when you take those ten steps backwards do you recognize what you're doing is very nefarious, perverted in nature and you know, starts down this very insipid and vicious and pernicious circle around uh, you know, some of the most perverted things on planet Earth. You know, I don't want to get too descriptive here, but things go very, very wrong in society, especially in the higher ups when a lot of money is concerned. And, um, you know, there's no relation to God, spirit, soul. And, uh, you know, people like Epstein are coming to mind and some of the individuals who have uh, been related to him. I know there was a list that came out very, very recently. So topical but these things happen again if you don't discipline that animal it's it, it's it's animal it's without consciousness and consciousness is god is found in the gathering of consciousness and the devil was found in the scattering of consciousness and those individuals scattered their consciousness and it's no surprise to me that these things have happened to them good women and people will really like you bad people or shady people who are unsure of themselves or have some other motives won't be comfortable around you. It's because they see their um, shame in you. They see what they could be in you. It's almost like you are a um, the highest version of themselves. And, you know, they say hell is coming face to face with the person that you could have been. And no wonder it makes you angry. No one wonder people want to lash out when they see what they could have become because they're bitter. And this is why a lot of people may experience a lot of hate and uh, attacks on this kind of level when you ascend and transcend past uh, carnality. Not out of intimidation, I don't think, but I don't actually know why exactly. Well, this is my interpretation of why. Anywhere in your life that you are lazy, when on retention, you will feel pathetic if you don't handle your stuff. Control your life. There is no sympathy on retention, no shortcuts, no laziness. If you aren't being all you could be, you will be painfully and agonizingly aware of it when you're on this journey of celibacy. You will want more from life, life, from other people. Be ready for disappointment if that doesn't happen and then move on and keep improving your life. Yeah, it's like being given a gift, right? It's like being given $100,000 and you don't invest it anywhere. When you start to recognize the power that you hold that is sitting in your balls and not using it to better your life, it's a waste. And of course, you'll feel frustrated. Of course, you'll feel, uh, you know, in a very not too dissimilar way, shameful that you have this gift and you're, you're not using it. This is this is men's superpower. And a lot of women's superpower is found in their sexuality as well. And, you know, why there's such an uprising of 
women who market themselves on these very illicit platforms and are able to gain a financial income to it. But our superpower power is found in the energy, in the conviction, in this really renowned and profound relationship with God, spirit, universe, other people, magnet, uh, magnetism, attraction, all these things. This is our innate superpowers. This is how we were supposed to live. And, you know, when you feel this, there's no going back. There's no going back. And it's uh, very guilt tripping to not invest that energy. For whatever reason, it seems to me that family didn't really notice much of a change as far as my energy. Other people like friends or women I knew or strangers definitely reacted differently to me though. It seems like family always sees you as a sibling or whatever, so they may not notice. This was true for me, but maybe not everybody. Um, I disagree with this. I mean, or it wasn't my experience. Let me know what your experience is with this, but I find your family know you intimately well, and I had very dramatic reactions in relation to when I was living with my family and when I come to visit them periodically and I'd, you know, changed in my demeanor, in my energy, how I hold myself, how I carried myself, how I communicated. And, you know, not just on the measurable levels in terms of what they can see, but also what they can feel and intuit via the toric field, the Taurus field. But guys, let me know how your family reacted to you when you started to discipline yourself in this nature. Everything comes full circle on retention. It takes you to the person that you were as a kid. Yeah, I, I completely identify with this particular interpretation. They say, I, I find like you, be, you become the kid again. You become that state of inner whimsy and playfulness and lightness and intuition. And you're not overthinking things. You're becoming playful. And this is why I believe you become so attractive. <laughs> Your motives become purely for the play of the moment instead of using other people for a means of your selfish pleasure. And when there's no pressure in that dimension, people gravitate towards you because it's innocent play. It's, it's like, um, again, if you, if you have maybe small children in your life, maybe you have children, maybe you have family that has small children, but when you're around children, they're just very infectious in terms of their energy. They just want to play. They just want to have fun. They're just present. That's another thing. You just become, you become so dense in your gravity and so present and so here and now that you forget about the prospect of time. You forget about the past. You forget about the future. You're just there in the moment. And there's nothing more compel compelling than being fully present. And that's what you're doing. You become present. You're becoming innocent and open hearted. It takes you through any trauma that you had then or after. You kind of merge your innocence, childlike, say, uh, childlike self with your adult self. I guess that's the real journey of becoming a whole person in this way. Yeah, you're healing that inner child. There's a lot of talk about uh, inner child therapy and healing that inner aspect of yourself. And I believe this practice is congruent and con consistent with the outcomes of what you're doing when you're healing your shadow, you're healing the child, you're, you're celebrating the child within you, that divine child within you. To really drive home the point about your energy and attraction, I attracted a woman who was tired of superficial sort of go nowhere society and over sexualization she had actual morals wanted a traditional family she had a pure heart just as i did we straight up had almost the exact same intentions and ideas for the future she was inside on a soul level a little girl in some ways just as i was that little boy but we were both adults as well we didn't want the sort of corruption or the corruption in the world to destroy us. And we found refuge in one another. This is how strong energy can be here. There's no way this would have happened if I wasn't on this journey. Like attracts like. That's all I'll say in that particular dimension. As you can see, almost all of this energy, all of this is energy based. That's your most powerful asset. You can literally attract whatever you feel and need strongly enough about. Taurus field, positive and negative. Use those things in combination. That's why the uh, law of attraction, and I know a lot of people don't like that word, I prefer the law of magnetism, accelerates when you're on this journey, especially when you're using this with intention. Very, very powerful. Regressions can and will happen. There's nothing you can do about them except realize it, learn from it, be honest with yourself, and then move forward again. It sucks to realize that you have regressed. I don't mean like relapsing, I mean turning into your weaknesses, but dwelling on it prolongs it. Again, mind creates matter in this way. 
Hookups aren't satisfying on this, even if it may be fun in the moment. Yeah, you begin to you begin to recognize the impermanence of pleasure. I'll say that again. You begin to recognize the impermanence of pleasure and hookups and you know anything in a promiscuous lifestyle is an impermanence of pleasure. It's cheap, it's fleeting, it's finite. It is not the infinite of joy, of a relationship, of monogamy, of being a kindred spirit, spirit with somebody. These things are far more satisfying and they permeate deeper into the soul, whereas hookups only stay superficially animalistic and uh, flesh surface level. Very, very shallow in that dimension. Alcohol can mess up your energy 100%. But I, I feel more sensitive towards alcohol when I'm on this journey and maybe that's because I adopt more of a ascetic and sober lifestyle. I can't say I've paid too much attention towards it. Perhaps, again, I'll be, I'd Appreciate some insight for those of you that have experienced maybe drinking. I I think I do stay away from it because it lowers your in um, it, it lowers your inhibitions, and you become more impulsive or reactive, and your prefrontal cortex starts to shut down if you're if you're drinking to excess, for sure. So it's um it's putting yourself into a dangerous position, and I would veto that. Bad diet, similarly, if you aren't on the best path that you could be, you'll be more aware of, of it on retention. It's like a mirror. It's looking into the mirror of your inadequacies. And, and I think this is an important point to mention that this doesn't fix all of your problems. There's still work to be done here. I think if retention is a mirror, it makes the mirror clearer. And then you can discern with more sensitivity and with more clarity, where are the next areas that you needed to work on? And for me, when I started this, it was uh, moving out my father's home. I recognized that uh, I needed to stand on my own two feet. And ultimately, if I wanted to provide for a family, I needed to provide for myself. That was the first logical step for me. And that's, that's um, I couldn't have done it without it, to be honest. If you're only into this to get chick's approval, it won't let you stay in that mind state. It's a weak way to go about things. You're a slave to approval, slave to validation. Everybody likes approval on an ego level. Who doesn't? like a attractive woman to be into them. It's fine, but if that's your motivation, it's a dead end. It's, uh, it's another trading in for lust, in my personal opinion. You trade virtual lust for physical lust. You trade the poisonous pixels for individuals that are purely after you in terms of your energy. And uh, you know the succubus has many forms, physical being, being one of them. The last point is true, but also don't lie to yourself. You are a man and you have a penis. You see a hot woman and you want to mate with her. That's how it should be. But see point 14. I think the point for me in this respect is that you can experience lust and desire, but you don't have to identify with it. And that is part of the, the lesson I had to learn in moving out of this cycle. Look, this journey of celibacy, look, monks in the Himalayas, it's not that they aren't, they don't get horny. They don't feel desire. That they don't, they aren't compelled to, to mate. That's part of the reason they remove themselves to the Himalayas. It's just they don't identify with it. You can be, you can experience anger and not punch somebody or punch a wall. You can experience, um, you can experience any emotion without acting upon it. And therein lies part and parcel of the keys to moving forward. For anybody who isn't like conventionally attractive, you'd be surprised how far your energy can get you and how far your vibe can get you in life uh, with women. 100%, especially as you recognize that women are more intuitional. There are several different ways of attracting, well, two distinct ways, I shouldn't say several, two ways, conscious attraction and subconscious attraction. All of the work done here is on the subconscious element, the subconscious layer. That is why you hear things, there's something about this individual. I liked their vibe, I liked their energy. There's, there's something you can't quite measure, can't quite measure. And that is a very intriguing, mysterious, and very, very compelling and attractive feeling to instigate in somebody, especially if you want to bring them into your life long term. Finally, you're dealing in something that can't be bought, only earned. I can say that again. Nobody can get what you are gaining, no matter how much power or money they have. That's why you are a rare commodity in some sense. When you get on a good streak, nobody is on that level, and many can't get on that level. It's only competition with yourself at the end of the day, though. Have fun, but don't be stupid. It's you against you. And I would uh, congratulate and commemorate 
anybody that goes, you know, a day, two days, three days, because it's all part of your particular journey. And different people react to this in different ways. A lot of people can become very sensitive to their natural high libido, sexual energy, whatever you want to call it, in the space of a week. Other people it may take longer to repair. Do you remember your intuition and your intention does come into play with this? Your transmutative exercises, you need to do spinal breathing. Links are on my Patreon. You need to do meditation. You need to, you need to do a lot of self-reflective practices and you need to move that bioelectrical energy from the pelvic floor up through the nerve plexuses. That is the scientific lens in which you can understand transmutation. Not this airy fairy, wishy-washy esoteric. Although the Hindus have known this for hundreds and thousands of years and some of the other religions as well. You can move this energy with prana, with breath, with intention. There are some transformative things you can do when you practice. If you go to the gym and you've never been to the gym before and you try and press 225, 100 kilograms from the UK, you'll kill yourself, maybe. But if you start small, if you do one round of Shakti breathing, if you do a Kumbhaka breath hold, breath retention, retaining CO2 is part and parcel of the pranic process. And then the next day, maybe you do longer. Maybe you do another round. And these rounds again, or on my Patreon, that you don't even need to do mine. There are other breath practices I'm sure you'll find for free on YouTube, but I, I, I don't care which one you use, but this is such a transformative, transmutative practice. It really, really is. And you know, I've been doing this for a while. And when I started actually integrating breath work, which I'm still annoyed about how long it took me to integrate this, things changed. Things got even better, even better. And um, maybe that's all I'll say on that. If you want another maybe in-depth video on breath work and how it relates to sexual energy, there are other videos below, but I can do some new ones for you if you would find that valuable. Please, I always appreciate your insight. If you find this valuable, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to me. These aren't theories, they're facts. Speak soon.